The world shaving market is worth $11.2 billion. It's big business and taken extremely seriously by all the major players. And as market leader, none take it more seriously than Gillette. For example, back in 1998 they spent $750 million, over $1 billion in today's money, to develop its famed Mac 3 razor. They then went on to spend even more than that to bring its six-bladed fusion razor to market in 2006. In Reading, a town in the UK, Gillette have a dedicated 8,500 square meter innovation center, established in 1959 by Gillette to better understand the way men shave. Over 120 chemists, biologists, pharmacists, aeronautical engineers, and even a rocket scientist who came from British Aerospace all work here in the research and development of safety razors under the watchful eye of Gillette's parent company, the $230 billion global powerhouse that is Procter & Gamble. At the research center every morning, 80 ordinary members of the public are given a chance to test out a new prototype razor. They go into individual cubicles arranged in a long line, stand in front of two-way mirrors and shave. While shaving, every one of their actions from the time spent preparing their faces to the angle and frequency of each razor stroke and even their grip on the handle are recorded by banks of monitors and cameras, some that track the shave at up to a quarter of a million frames per second. Miniature cameras are even mounted on the backs of the razors themselves so they can catch every detail. Afterwards, these daily test shavers as they are known are asked to rate their experience, ticking off 70 different attributes from smoothness of glide to how easy the razor was to clean between strokes. These results are then recorded on a diagrammatical face map. The volunteers are then interviewed about the results. After that, there may be another round of tests to assess the impact on their skin using powerful microscopes. These results allow Gillette's engineers to go back and tweak whatever conceptual design they are working on and render new razors using a rapid polymer prototyping 3D printer that the company designed and built itself to fit their very specific and detailed requirements. They even have a specially built virtual reality studio where concepts and designs can be tested out before they even go into the prototyping stage. Every single aspect of the shaving experience is examined in minute detail. The precise angle of each blade, the stiffness of the springs that push the blade against your face, the spacing of the fins on the rubber grip, the weight distribution of the handle. There isn't one single characteristic that isn't scrutinized over. So why then? With all this monumental effort put into research and development and the billions spent employing the best scientific engineering and design brains on the planet through all of their marketing and promotional material where they explain in granular detail why and how this latest innovative razor is going to give you the best shave of your life all in an effort to sell you more and more razors. Why oh why can't they simply make it last longer? I feel we need a bit of context. This is a turbine blade from a Rolls-Royce Trent jet engine. When in operation, it spins at 10,000 RPM, meaning it's moving at 800 miles an hour, 39 miles an hour faster than the speed of sound. It has a g-force on it of 18 tons trying to rip it apart. It operates at 1700 degrees, 220 degrees past the melting point of steel, and it lasts for 30,000 hours or 18 billion revolutions before it needs to be replaced. So surely, with all of today's modern technology, why aren't they offering us something better? Well in 1970, a company called Persona tried to do exactly that. They decided they would be the ones to take on Gillette. Their plan was to create a low cost disposable blade for the people that would last as long as possible. And this was it, the Persona 74. Why 74 when it was released in 1970? because 74 is the atomic number for its game-changing ingredient, tungsten. Persona went to Sweden and, and worked, worked with, with precision, precision steel, steel experts, experts to develop a razor blade made of tungsten steel. No metal holds a sharper edge. Introducing the totally new tungsten tough Persona 74. The Persona 74. This is the sharpest, longest lasting razor blade made. The tungsten blade needs a smoother shape, Persona 74. Not just a coating, but a totally new blade steel. New Persona 74. Tungsten tough to smooth out your shave. The Persona 74. 
Persona created a tungsten and steel alloy that was extremely hard and wear resistant. The very same alloy that is used to manufacture rocket engines. But just to take it one step further, they also coated each blade with a microscopic layer of titanium that added to its longevity. This made it easily the sharpest and longest lasting commercial razor blade ever brought to market and something way more advanced than anything available in 2020. Customers found that they did not need to change their blades for months at a time. Users would report that even after a month of use, it was still like it was fresh out of the packet. Suddenly, a month's worth of blades would last a whole year. Great news for the consumer. However, after only four short years of production, it was stopped. And now you can find what is left of their short production run on eBay, being traded between enthusiasts who swap shaving notes on them like wine connoisseurs would over a bottle of robust Malbec. So why did they stop production on what is a perfect razor blade? The answer is because the entire wet shaving industry is built on the bait and hook business model. Like printers, capsule coffee machines, and even games consoles, it's not the printer, coffee machine, or games console they make money on. In fact, they usually sell them at a loss. It's items you put in them that they make their money on. With razors, each blade cartridge costs somewhere in the region of 5 to 10 cents to manufacture but retails for $3.50. That is a 97% profit margin. Therefore, the more blades you sell, the more money you make. Or to put it another way, the longer the blades last, the less money you make. And that's unfortunately why the Persona 74 failed after such a short time. They simply weren't making enough money. And unluckily for us, the consumer, our happiness won't keep the shareholders content. However, there is hope, with new agile startups making strides in the industry like Harry's, Dollar Shave Club, along with We Shave and Billy targeted at women, they are shaking up the market and causing all sorts of headaches for the established big boys. Gillette, for example, has gone from 70% market share down to 54% in the last 10 years. And with Dollar Shave Club being bought by Unilever, Gillette's parent company Procter & Gamble's arch nemesis, the battle lines are being drawn. And Gillette appear to be doing what many other large companies tend to do when up against nimble startups. They panic and start to react to what has happened, rather than try to anticipate what is going to happen. It's like watching an oil tanker try to catch a jet ski. With all of this startup pressure, it may force Gillette to eventually go nuclear, roll the dice and bring back to market the tungsten blade, or perhaps even go one step further and use more cutting edge state of the art technology. There is a German company called GFD who have developed a consumer razor blade using none other than the hardest substance known to man, diamond. It consists of a carbide blade that has a nanocrystalline diamond coating that is then sharpened by plasma. They can engineer where each of its atoms are specifically placed in its crystalline structure, creating a super sharp blade that is only a few atoms across at its cutting edge. And being diamond, it can last for a reported 1000 shaves or about 12 years with the average person's usage. They quote that each blade would cost somewhere around the $130 mark but dividing that by 1,000 uses gives you a price of 13 cents per shave. That may be wishful thinking as a consumer in a free market economy, but with the industry as a whole shrinking by 4% year on year as global wages decline and as industry insiders call it the hipster beard trend, as strong as ever, I feel anything could be possible. And I for one would love to see what is possible when combining bleeding edge technology with a razor blade. Thanks for watching this episode of Behind Designs. Please make sure to like, share and subscribe.